It's called the Fourth Industrial Revolution. To date, there have been three industrial revolutions. The first happened in the late 1700s with the invention of the steam engine, which led to the creation of factories and a booming textile industry. In the late 1800s, the second industrial revolution was marked by mass production, as well as new industries like steel and electricity. And the third happened in the late 1900s, which saw the invention of the computer and the internet. Now, the fourth industrial revolution describes the emergence of artificial intelligence and how it integrates more with humans. Artificial intelligence, or AI, can already be seen in our daily lives, from how we check out at the supermarket to how we check in for a flight. But it's far more advanced than most people realize. In August 2020, entrepreneur Elon Musk gave a demo of his new company, Neuralink. Connected to our brains with tiny wires, this microchip is synced with AI, enabling humans to control anything from prosthetic limbs to computer games. This working proof of concept has already been fitted into people. It has the potential to completely transform the way we interact online. So there's actually a lot of functions that this device could do uh, related to monitoring your health and warning you about a possible heart attack or stroke or other uh, damage, as well as uh, sort of convenience features like playing music. Um, you could do a lot. Um, it's sort of like if your phone went at your brain or something. It's a cyborg. It's a, it's a combination. It's a combination of electronics and biology. Yeah. Things are getting more and more connected. Kai Fu Li is the former president of Google China and Microsoft Research China, as well as the author of New York Times bestseller, AI's Superpowers, China, Silicon Valley, and the New World Order. Kai Fu believes that China will be the AI superpower within five years. For those of you who haven't been to China for the three years, please be careful when you go because your credit card and cash may not be accepted. Uh, China has pretty much been taken over by mobile payments. In the age of AI, if data is the new oil, then China is the new Saudi Arabia. One concern that is topical in the development of AI is the displacement of jobs. Robots are clearly replacing people's jobs. They're working 24 by 7. They're more efficient. So therefore, are you convinced long term that we're going to have a jobs problem in the world? Uh, not long term, but maybe in the next uh, 10 years, within the next 10 you years. You mean it's going to happen much sooner? Much sooner. If a lot of people will find happiness without working, that would be a happy outcome. At Amazon fulfillment centers, robots transport items to humans who then pack them to be delivered. Amazon believes that within 10 years, they will not need a single human to fulfill an order. According to the World Economic Forum, 50% of the workforce will need reskilling by 2025. And it's likely that only a fraction of these will find work, resulting in a large proportion of the workforce becoming unemployed. pretty good chance we, we end up with a universal basic income or something like that due to automation. You know, people have time to do other things and have more complex things, more interesting things, uh, so they more leisure time. And then we've got to figure out how we integrate with a world in the future with advanced AI. One idea that is gaining popularity is to charge tech companies with a robot tax, which can be distributed to the unemployed as a universal basic income. I don't think the robot companies are going to you know, be outraged that there might be a tax. Uh, it's okay. <laughs> Contrary to the past to the previous three revolutions, probably jobs will be faster destroyed compared to new ones uh, being created. This is Klaus Schwab, the author of this book, The Fourth Industrial Revolution. He's also the executive chairman of the World Economic Forum which is funded by the largest global enterprises and whose members include CEOs, heads of state and government ministers from countries such as the UK and US. The fourth industrial revolution will impact our lives completely. It will change actually us, our own identity, which of course gives life uh, to such uh, policies and uh, developments like uh, smart traffic, smart government, smart cities. 
In June 2019, the UK government published details about their partnership with the World Economic Forum in a policy called Regulation for the Fourth Industrial Revolution. One year later, in June 2020, the World Economic Forum released this promotional video entitled The Great Reset. The purpose for this film is to imply that everything from economics to our culture needs to change. After the reset, it shows images of digital technology, biological cells, populations, cash, climate change, traffic management, and this. Seem familiar? This promotional video was released six months before Margaret Keenan received the first COVID-19 vaccine. In November 2020, Time magazine published The Great Reset on their front cover. The World Economic Forum's managing director, Jeremy Jurgens, believes that it will have a devastating impact on our economy. You know, if we look at The Great Reset, you know, we're still at the early stages of a global crisis that's going to forever uh, transform society. You know, when it first started, people said, OK, this is the biggest crisis to hit since 2007-2008 financial crisis. And then a little bit later, they said, oh wow, this is the biggest crisis since World War II. Now we're looking at them and saying, oh look, this is comparable to what happened in the Great Depression. Politicians are also endorsing the campaign. This pandemic has provided an opportunity for a reset. This is our chance to accelerate our pre-pandemic efforts to reimagine economic systems. History would look at this crisis as the great opportunity for reset. All elements of the Great Reset are fundamental to building the future we need. And it's even promoted by the royal family, who posted this video on their YouTube page with the Great Reset hashtag. We are on the verge of catalytic breakthroughs that will alter our view of what is possible and profitable within the framework of a sustainable future. We need nothing short of a paradigm shift, one that inspires action at revolutionary levels and pace. We simply cannot waste any more time. The only limit is our willingness to act. And the time to act is now. The World Economic Forum believes that capitalism needs to be reinvented. Their Build Back Better slogan has been adopted by politicians across the globe. This moment also gives us a much greater chance to be radical and to do things differently. To build back better. Because we can only build back better if we lean on one another. Over the last two weeks, I've shared my agenda for economic recovery. I call it Build Back Better. Because we can't just build back to the way things were before. We have to do it better. And the first plank of my Build Back Better plan rejects the defeatist view that, autom that automation and globalization mean we can't assure American workers lead to a future made in America. So what does the world look like after the Great Reset? This social media post by the World Economic Forum demonstrates eight predictions by 2030. Here are three of them. You'll own nothing and you'll be happy. Whatever you want, you'll rent and it'll be delivered by drone. And Western values will have been tested to the breaking point. Many of Boris Johnson's new policies fall in line with the World Economic Forum's objectives. In November 2020, his new green industrial revolution plan included a ban on petrol and diesel cars by 2030. Combined with other current restrictions, 
such as blocking vehicle access to side roads, causing gridlock on main roads, extending the congestion zone, and introducing a paper mile road tax. One might think that he's attempting to remove ownership of cars. The biggest application is the um, autonomous driving. This is going to replace the entire transportation uh, that we have, we're used to today. You will no longer buy cars. Your car is parked 96% of the time, so it's depreciating. How bad is that for an investment? Right? Only 4% of the time is it getting you from place A to place B. But imagine there is an Uber that gets here in 30 seconds and is very reliable, very clean, and there's no nasty driver because there is no driver, and it's very safe. Uh, would you not, not buy a car? One thing about AI is it gets better with data. In 10 years after its first launch, it will probably be so much better than people, most of us will be afraid to drive. You know why? Because autonomous vehicles will start talking to each other. They will miss each other by one centimeter. And we as humans are, will become our worst enemies because we're going to be the threat to our lives. The machines are going to be safe. And pretty soon after that, humans will be disallowed from driving. Suppose you're a 50 years old truck driver and you just lost your job to a self-driving vehicle. Now there are new jobs in designing software or in teaching yoga to engineers. But how does a 50 years old truck driver reinvent himself or herself as a software engineer or as a yoga teacher? Because AI is nowhere near its full potential. All jobs will disappear, new jobs will emerge, but then the new jobs will rapidly change and vanish. At the World Economic Forum 2020 annual meeting in Davos, historian, philosopher and author Yuval Noel Harari warned the audience about the dangers of artificial intelligence. We hear so much about the enormous promises of technology, and these promises are certainly real, but technology might also disrupt human society and the very meaning of human life in numerous ways, ranging from the creation of a global useless class to the rise of data colonialism and of digital dictatorships. Those who fail in the struggle against irrelevance would constitute a new useless class. And this useless class will be separated by an ever-growing gap from the ever more powerful elite. We are already in the midst of an AI arms race, with China and the USA leading the race, and most countries being left far, far behind. AI will likely create immense wealth in a few high-tech hubs, while other countries will either go bankrupt or will become exploited data colonies. Just think, what will happen to developing economies once it is cheaper to produce cars in California than in Mexico? And what will happen to politics in your country in 20 years when somebody in San Francisco or in Beijing knows the entire medical and personal history of every politician and every journalist in your country, including all their sexual escapades, all their mental weaknesses, and all their corrupt dealings. When you have enough data, you don't need to send soldiers in order to control a country. Between the beginning of the pandemic and August 2020 alone, Seven Silicon Valley tech giants added nearly 2.5 trillion to their market value. If today's most powerful people wanted to accelerate the shift towards the fourth industrial revolution by removing jobs and reinventing capitalism, this problem reaction solution strategy would be effective in achieving it. The coronavirus outbreak has been declared a pandemic. We are collectively telling 
telly, cafes, pubs, bars and restaurants to close tonight as soon as they reasonably can and not to open create the digital ID today. It's a natural evolution of the way that we're going to use technology in any event to transact daily life. And this COVID crisis gives an additional reason for doing that. Well, let's see how long it uh, takes you to find me. Right behind me, you can see uh, just over over my left shoulder there. Hello, guys. I've been expecting you. In return for giving us the universal basic income, are these the conditions they will require? Smart cities will pullulate with sensors, all joined together by the Internet of Things. And the urban environment is as antiseptic as a Zurich pharmacy. But this technology could also be used to keep every citizen under round-the-clock surveillance. A future Alexa will pretend to take orders, but this Alexa will be watching you, clucking her tongue and stamping her foot. In future, voice connectivity will be in every room and almost every object. Your mattress will monitor your nightmares, your fridge will beep for more cheese, your front door will sweep wide the moment you approach like some silent butler, your smart meter will go hustling of its own accord for the cheapest electricity and every one of them minutely transcribing your every habit in tiny electronic shorthand stored, not in their chips or in their innards, nowhere you can find it, but in some great cloud of data that lowers ever more oppressively over the human race. AI, what will it mean? Helpful robots washing and caring for an aging population or pink-eyed terminators sent back from the future to cull the human